I like to call it to order the meeting of the action board of county commissioners. It's May 11th. Um, we're at the courthouse, the commission room. Would everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, public comment. Any public comment? I don't see any. Um, we had a chance to read the minutes. I have. Yes. Is that a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Is it written? I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, send the father say aye. 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 Uh, okay. Brian Oswald, facilities maintenance supervisor, approval of department project. I don't think, I don't think Brian's on. Do we have a purchase order uh, in the amount of $3,525.32 to the hardware store? Uh, this is for getting a new facilities, uh, a room and workshop for the facilities manager at the old recycle center. It's for $3,525.32. Does the chair have a motion to approve? So moved and it's the rescue building out on 73. Okay, if anyone... well, I used to be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, move the second uh, discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes through the Zoom. I'll just expand a little bit on that just for the public. Um, so we hired Brian Oswald as our maintenance director, and he's a very hands-on um, maintenance director who needs space to do um, workshop type functions um, for the county facilities. So uh, we found him a workspace and that's uh, that's what we're approving or the materials to create it for him. Uh, Joe Schneider, he's here in person today. Um, we've got a couple things today. Uh, one is a purchase order for micro surfacing projects. So, you want to explain it? Uh, we had to let it to bid. We had two, two companies bid it. It's micro surfacing on 286 from Highway 73 to Graham Road, three miles. Uh, there was a difference of $23,000. Vance Brothers came in at $126,057.60, and payment management was $149,952. And I'm here today with this purchase order for Vance Brothers, as we discussed in the meeting this morning. The chair would entertain a motion to Vance Brothers uh, for $126,000. 57.60. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Also move. To move by Commissioner Miller. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. Discussion? Is there any further um, base work you have to do to that or just? Uh, we, we're doing, we've done as much as we can right now. I'll have him come out and look and see if there's anything else he wants us to do. As soon as we get our milling machine and asphalt, when we can do that milling for the asphalt, we'll be able to do more. Okay. But uh, I'm going to have him come out and, and let us know what we need to do to, to make this successful. Okay. Well, any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. And I believe the other was the uh, signing of the agreement with KDOT on the off system bridge. Pardon me, it's a 19.0 E3. So the chair will entertain a, a, a motion to approve the, uh, the agreement for the off system bridge. Um, I have a motion. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Quinn. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Knoll. Discussion? 
this is cost share. Because of cost share, and I'm sorry, I believe we uh, lost all of our power at the Run Bridge. Uh, it explains the 80 20 percent what we signed earlier. Standard agreement. Standard agreement, and all the pre-design stuff is on us, but all construction, engineering, and all the construction, other than moving, you know, your right of ways or moving utilities, is on us. So. Okay, which bridge is this again? It's a uh, B.0. Let me get there. Sorry. 193, I believe. 19.0 B.3. Okay. But it's the one there on the uh, main road, North Carolina. Okay. All those in favor, step your pocket, saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay, Joe, that's all for you today so far. Okay. 20 minutes before you. Yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Christine, Christina Rowan from NEK Bucky County Health. Hello. I am just on for our annual budget. So I emailed the proposal. Um, please note that at the top, I didn't update the, I used the same Template. spreadsheet. And so I forgot to change the dates. The figures are all correct. And I did email the corrected version to Eric and Michelle. Um, so we are not asking for an increase this year, just this 80,000. Um, our budget last year was completely blown because of COVID. So we actually ended up bringing in a lot more funding than anticipated and kind of the same in 2021 so far. Um, we are probably looking at about an extra 100,000 in grants um, and then some of the largest grant will be pushed into 2020 two calendar year. So we are just asking Atchison to continue to contribute the same 80,000 that you did last year. Questions? Do you have a proposed 2022? I only have this, proposed 2021. That's the, the <laughs> data. That's the, okay. that's the reason. Um, so estimated is 2021? Yes. Yes, it's all a year behind on the, the heading only. Okay. The figures are correct. I caught that yesterday. And... So I have some questions for you as a new commissioner that, um, and I know that I had emailed you um, back in February and just trying to understand, because I'm not the commissioner that sits on the NEKES board. So, um, or the Northeast Kansas Multi-County Health Board. So um, our 80,000 that Atchison provides for the highest contributor of the multi-county, um, but that's it's, due to population? That is correct. Okay. And um, that our 80,000 supports all programs and staff at the health department, as well as paying for the utilities, office supplies, medical equipment needed that cannot be paid for by a grant. Is that that is correct. So we have two RNs um, and LPN who was just made full time, and then the receptionist. Okay. So we were able to do that without increasing. Um, we're staying at the 80,000 then. Yes, the rest okay. has been taken care of with grant writing, and we did write for um, the additional grant funding for COVID. So I know if you look at the estimated, um, the header says 2020, but it's actually 2021. It shows our grants uh, 584,000. That is because some of those grant funds are going to be used in 2022. Or, yeah, in 2022, because our fiscal year actually starts on July 1. So it's a little bit different from your calendar year. But because of that grant funding, we 
are still asking for just the same amount and that funding stays in Atchison County. Okay. And then you, are you in charge of the multi-county health organization then for all three counties? Yes. Okay. Um, and just kind of understanding that. So do you hire our local, like our local nurse or is that the board or how does that work? And um, we, NEK hires our own staff. Um, our board is composed of nine members, a commissioner from each county, a medical professional from each county, as well as a consumer of medical services from each county. And they do weigh in on some management positions, but our employees are hired by NEK. By, by you as the head of the organization, is that correct? Yes, and if they're working in a certain county, then we have a three member admin team that will sit in on interviews as well. So it's not just solely my decision. There's other administrative folks that will sit in on those interviews. Okay. And then how, who determines the services that are provided in the three counties as a multi-county? So um, most of the funding is through grants from KDHE, and so those grants determine what type of services that we provide. We also are statutorily required to provide some of them, such as the disease investigation and things like that. So we write grants for you know, our WIC and MCH programs, public health emergency preparedness, and those grants tell us what you know, what we need to do to meet those objectives. So which services we need to provide, which trainings we need to take, what we need to do in our community in order to receive that funding. Okay. And so when you're, when you're writing those grants or receiving um, items through that multi-county setup, then are you the one designating who gets what and how it's distributed or how does that work? So I write the grants with the nurses from each county. So they Im provide input on how we can meet the grant requirements and what services we can offer. And then I take care of the funding. So all of our grants are written for the agency as a whole. And we don't earmark, you know, a certain percentage of our maternal and child health funding for one office. We do the best we can just to make sure each office gets what they need, with the exception of WIC. WIC is determined by uh, the caseloads in each office. So the amount of funding that we get for Atchison County is dependent on the WIC caseload for Atchison County. Okay. We also have a home health and hospice that um, generates income and sometimes public health can't fully fund itself. It is not a money making operation and so therefore our hospice is able to help bring us, you know, where we need to be. Their, their profit is oftentimes used on the public health side and our Hospice also um, supports staff in Atchison County. So we have employees that live in Atchison County that service people in Atchison County as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that that was one of the things, especially with COVID, I feel like it gets people thinking more about your county health department because sometimes they fly under the radar, they do a good job, and then COVID comes and you're like, what what exactly is going on so if like for myself as a resident i was trying to understand so we're multi-county with these three with these two other counties but there for at the beginning of covid when the public testing came out atchison was unable to offer that um and the gal at our local office said well but jackson county is offering it you can take your family out there and so for me i'm just like we're the biggest contributor with the most population but yet we have to drive to Jackson County to do a drive through COVID testing when Atchison did not have those resources at the beginning. And I just wanna understand that because for me, um, as an Atchison County commissioner, Atchison County is my focus and my number one and, and having to have our residents drive to a 
to a side count, you know, a surrounding county to get those services. It just, I, I wasn't understanding how that works. So in reality, that doesn't have anything to do with your local health department not wanting to provide the service or your county levy funding. Um, that was provided through KDHE. Um, KDHE provided all of the testing equipment um, and the machines. So they provided all the swabs, um, all of the equipment needed for that. At the time, um, all three of our counties did have a Cepheid machine, a testing machine on order, but everything was so back ordered that none of our counties were able to get their own machine. So the Jackson County machine was provided to Jackson County in May of last year when Johnsonville had a big outbreak. So okay. Basically, that's how it works. They had the first mass outbreak in our Northeast Kansas region. And so KDHE set up that Abbott testing machine along with the free testing equipment there in Jackson County. Um, and they had the Army National Guard out that helped with that testing initially. And then they allowed us to keep that machine in Jackson County. And then they kept providing us the supplies. So it doesn't really have anything to do with the population or with the county levy funding that you provide. Um, it just so happens that that was where the first outbreak was in Northeast Kansas. So we do all have a machine now and we can provide fourplex testing. So the machines that were purchased with Spark funding are able to test for COVID, um, influenza A, influenza B, and RSV, and all of our offices have that capability now to do that. But again, those machines were severely backordered across the state, across the country. Nobody was able to get those supplies. We just were able to utilize the state's cash in, in Jackson County. So the reality is, I know that it's the multi-county is kind of hard for people to understand how it all works, but when you think about what you're providing, $80,000, and you've got four full-time staff, if you weren't a part of the multi-county, your county would be paying the salary benefits and medical equipment, all of the things for those staff without the benefit of the the joint county, you know, without the benefit of having our revenues from other sources to be able to pool. So we pool those sources, we collectively share the funding. Um, we have home health and hospice, like I said, um, that we are able to use those funds from. And we are not on the county's payroll. We are not on the county's insurance. We are you know, not contributing for our staff's capers. Um, none of those costs are coming from the county. Okay. I appreciate you under, uh, explaining that Jackson County um, testing site because I think from public perception, things get skewed and it can put a bad taste in several people's mouth, but understanding you know, the outbreak at Johnsonville, it just kind of it kind of opens up, I guess, truth to, to what's actually going on. Um, I guess another question I have is, so our local county health nurse reports to you, then you would be her boss or the multi-county health board is her boss? Um, she would report to me, but she is also able, like I said, we have a three-part administrative team. So she she can report to any of the three. Typically, it's going to be me. Um, we just don't limit our supervisors, you know, because sometimes you might have an issue with one. You don't want that to be the only person that they're allowed to report to, but they are also free to speak to members of the commission as well as our board of directors. Um, we don't have any policy that prohibits our nurses or any of our staff from talking to members of our board or county commissioners from each county respectively. Okay, are you giving them guidance on how often they should update the commissions or I just know as a new county commissioner, it's mid-May and I haven't been briefed. I know Lori was on several agendas at the beginning of the year, but then 
she was always too busy to come before us to give updates. So we get our updates regularly from our emergency management director. But um, I think from public perception, your local health nurse should be giving a little more communication to Atchison County as far as what's what's going on. And I so, think that that's reasonable to request. However, I, you know, when we were running Tuesday, Thursday mass immunization clinics, it's, it is pretty hard for her to get on a Zoom on a Tuesday or a Thursday. Each county requests different timeframes from when they want to hear from the health officer or the nurse supervisor. So I think now that we are pretty you know, pretty well done with those big immunization clinics. If you would like for Lori or myself or both of us to be on a little more regularly, I think we can do that. Um, but when we're doing clinics, you just have to understand we are a very small team and every one of our staff, as well as myself, were at those clinics working. So it's just not possible. We, you know, we can't do everything. We can immunize our, your county's residents, or we can be on a Zoom, but she can't be both places. Right. Well, and I know this was even prior to immunization, um, but well, and also the, the updates that are coming from your emergency manager are, are coming from your health officer and your medical director, or medical consultant for the county. So Wes and Lori and Bonnie Tackett, they're all working together to provide that information. So when Wes is reporting to you, that's that information is coming from your health officer and your medical consultant. No, I understand that. I just think if we're funding a like funding a multi-county venture and she's Atchison County's health nurse mm -hmm. that um, but I, that we need more regular updates, but yeah, we'll definitely make the request, um, request again and for that. So, and like and again, I said, just so you know, really quick, um, my job as a county commissioner is to listen to Atchison County. So it's not me being critical of anyone. It's me doing my job as far as absorbing the feedback I get as a commissioner, asking the questions and bringing transparency. So I'm not trying to pick on you or pick on Lori. It's just, it really is public perception and, and trying to make some clarification. So we're all on the same, the same team and heading in a positive direction. So absolutely. And it's, you know, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about how that works or what we're doing, what we're providing, what the county is getting for that funding. Um, if you reach out to some of your surrounding counties and maybe just see how much public health costs them, um, not being a part of a multi-county, I think that you will be surprised to hear what, you know, what they're paying when just your health nurse salary and benefits are coming from the county. Thank you. Christina, you know, I became aware recently how much you're providing to the Atchison County Senior Village. Could you okay. talk about what that is and what the numerical amount of that might be? So our hospice has residents that are in Atchison Senior Village, which is a county owned facility. And whenever we are taking care of those folks that are living in the nursing home, we are fully funding as an agency through hospice, their stay there. So um, I was able to look and in the first six months of last year, we had paid over $100,000 in room and board for residents of Senior Village. So essentially, not only are you getting the services that our health department is providing, but our home health and hospice is giving back to the county in that way. And we do have two full-time nurses that live in Atchison and their children go to school here and they pay taxes here. So um, we do help out in the community as many ways as we can and offer as many services as we can. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out too, while we're talking about how this makeup works with NEK and, and our county, and of course I'm on the board, so I, I get have been privileged to see how these counties have worked together. I mean, 
like when we had the clinics, Christina was going and working the clinics to do data entry. And uh, when, you know, it, when there's a, an absence in one county, we've got staff that can come in and fill in. It's not like if someone was sick and we just had to close the door because we were a single county, we've only got one person there that can open the door that day. Or, you know, the, the, the staff has really worked well with all three counties. They're not county specific. I mean, they generally work in one county, but if there's an absence or uh, vacations or anything like that, um, uh, uh, things have worked really well together. Plus, I know uh, I've several times when there's been uh, something going on, well, the three county health officials have all had to put their heads together, you know, and they've got one another to really rely on and, and trained. And if there's a new one in the county, well, we've just lost Jackson County. I always hate, had, hated to see her go, but she had to move on. But uh, uh, she was a wealth of knowledge. And so I, I think the, it kind of gives a bigger base of, of uh, expertise and help. And I really appreciate it. And I think just understanding outside of COVID, what maybe the top five resources are that that your organization provides for Atchison County, just for the public to know. Um, okay, so we have WIC, um, Women and Women's Infants and Children, is a grant, and it provides um, services and food vouchers to women. So formula for their babies, fruits and vegetables. I'm sure most people. Um, are familiar with WIC. If not, and they want to learn more, they can give us a call. We have MCH, which is our maternal child health. Um, we offer well baby visits. We offer um, all sorts of things for moms and their babies um, and adolescent children. We do can be healthy screenings. We have um, Dr. Tackett who comes to our office once a month to offer some services to those that are uninsured or underinsured at a low cost. So um, we can run labs if people have a doctor's order um, for those people that um, you know, need lab work done that they can't necessarily afford it through the hospital, we can do that. We provide immunizations for children. Um, we do flu clinics. We have STD testing and treatment. And almost all of the services that we provide, it, we provide can be um, paid for on a sliding scale. So those that don't have insurance or who have insurance that maybe wouldn't cover some of these things, we can do some income-based things for them. Um, and then we are a part of the Northeast Corner region for public health emergency preparedness. So not only do we rely on our three counties to kind of work together when it comes to like per se COVID or just any thing that's going on in our region health wise or um, public health emergency wise, we have that group of counties, you know, that we can reach out to and receive information from. So those are kind of the top things that um, we are able to offer here. Okay. Do you guys ever do any collaboration with any FQHCs? Because some of the services that you were, I, I think the Atchison Community Health Clinic also offers those in Atchison County. And I was just wondering if you guys do any collaboration or have had any talks as, about how you could both team up to better serve the community um, or Atchison County as a whole. We have met with um, Stevie at Atchison Community Clinic when he first started there. We have met with him since. Um, we do kind of offer a little bit different services. I know some of them might sound the same, but they the programs don't necessarily work the same. And we did collaborate with the health clinic and the hospital and emergency management on the COVID vaccinations. Um, I know that. Um, Lori works well with them. Um, Wes talks with him. So we're all, you know, working together to make sure that we are reaching the people that we need to reach. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I have one more thing. I've got to tell you that this has been a long year. 
Kid ass. <laughs> and I got to tell you that I heard a number, and I I know I don't remember the exact number, but more than fifty health professionals in our state quit yeah. because of the pressure and the. And I got to tell you that my comments from the citizens that I talk to are overwhelmingly thankful for the way we acted, the way we reported all the things that happened in this last year. And I want to personally thank everybody at the you know, at NEK Health because without you guys, we would have been a disaster. I mean, uh, it was really positive. And uh, I, I tell Lori how much she's appreciated all the time, but I just want to tell you that we appreciate the whole organization. And yeah. I had to point out too, you've asked for eighty thousand dollars every year. I've been a commissioner for four years, but I mean, it isn't like you're coming back looking eighty five this year, ninety, ninety five. You've you've given us, you've been doing the same amount, and it, it's really appreciated. Thank you very much. We are not going to ask for more if we don't need more. And we have been running for as many years as I've been with the agency on the same amount, and we don't need to ask for more. So we, you know, we don't intend to ask for more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jackie Fernand, Amelia Hart Festival, 2022 budget request. Good, good afternoon. I started to say good morning, but <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> well, 2022, we hope there's going to be a festival. We're planning big time on it. So um, we'll be ready to get back in the swing. And I think we'll be, we'll have people that'll be anxious. Anybody have any questions? Um, maybe I want to get this straight in my mind now. Last year, uh, there was a your normal uh, allotment was $7,500, and you didn't have the festival. You had offered to return it, but we just said keep the allotment and or the request, and then we didn't fund you for next year is that correct i believe so i believe you're right so we already and then we're not having it this year again so are you still asking for that for next year or for next year yes next for next year? year yeah the funds that we got for mostly for last year when when requests had already gone out um we are in the process of trying to redo the overlook out at Warnock Lake. Uh, we had hoped to get a Boy Scout that was working on his Eagle project to do it, but that seems to have kind of fallen by the wayside. So um, we are going to meet with the landscaper and, and try to get that all redone using the funds that people were nice enough to give us for last year and then it didn't happen. But um, we went, I went to everyone just like you and asked them, you know, we'll be happy to return the money. Um, I think everybody except one said keep it. So um, we have a little bit of money there that we want to redo that overlook with so that it'll be fresh and ready for next year's festival, um, as well as for people that go out there in the in-between times. Well, I think what Eric was saying, I think he's in the impression, and I guess I am too, that we were letting it ride. To, I mean, last year we didn't use the money. This year we didn't use the money. Next year there's the money. Yeah, I think we're letting it ride. Okay, so well, I'm not sure I understand. So I, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'll have to go back and look honestly because having not done it for two years, but I thought that you gave us the money for, boy, this is hard to get this straight in my head, for 2020. Correct. But I don't believe you gave us the money for 2021. No. Okay. But you didn't have the festival of 2020. Right, right. Yeah. And that's what, when my request to return it, if you wanted it, um, or to keep it was that if we kept it, that's what we were going to do with it was do the overlook at, at Warnock. I, I, I didn't understand that. I don't remember that because it's kind of. Okay. 
little surprised that it was used for something else. But um, well, that was part of the request letter. Was if you wanted us to return it, we would. But if we, and that was my letter to everybody that had given us money. But if you didn't want us to return it, that that's what it would be used for. But again, that's, you know, that's a year and a half ago now. <laughs> so, um, so I guess what I'm, what are you, are you saying that you don't want to give us money for 2022? Is that? Well, I mean, we were funding AE Festival and there's two years that there has been no festival. So that's kind of the way I understood that that was going to ride until you needed it for, for a year that it did uh, take okay. place. Well, okay. And so, I guess that's fine. If Obviously, if that's your decision, that's your decision. But when our letters went out about keeping the money, it was to use it for the overlook. So I will just make sure we don't use that money for the overlook. Okay, well, I mean, that's just the way I understood it. Uh, and I don't remember seeing a, a letter discussing the overlook. I mean, I've... I, that I'm looking at all the documents you sent last year, and I don't see a letter. Okay, well, I may be able to look back and see if I can find it, but... There's, I mean, I see a... AFS budgets, and I, but I don't see a letter. I'm not saying there isn't one, but I'm pretty good at keeping most of these. For sure. Um, so if you find it, you might forward that to us. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look and see if I still have it. Okay. So I definitely don't have that letter <laughs> because <laughs> I, I wasn't here, but um, I um, was wondering outside of the monetary donation that's been done for years and years. Are there ways the county commissioners can support Amelia Earhart Festival without, without the monetary piece of it? Um, I know from constituents, um, some of the apportioned, apportioned um, funds historically, um, and especially now that I'm sitting in the seat and I'm privy to budgets and, and you know funding and, and those things, I just wondered from you, I mean, obviously $7,500 isn't going to be detrimental because Amelia Earhart Festival's awesome, amazing, grows each year, but is there something from the county commission standpoint that we can help support outside of the funding that has been given in years past? I don't know. I would have to think about that. Um, you know, the city is tremendous in the support they give because our events are in the city. Um, and I guess as far as the 7,500 to provide what we provide to the entire county for no charge in fireworks and everything that we do, to me, that $7,500 is, is pretty minimal, but yet it's very important to what we do. Um, because I know, um, I know Commissioner Bauer knows for sure from being on the city commission that it's not a festival that makes money. We're not about making money. We just want to have enough left at the end to start to build for the next one. So um, every donation, every sponsorship is critical to make it happen. Okay. Do you consider it a, a tour, a tourism event? Because in my mind, I do, just because I see so many people. Absolutely. Actress, yeah, absolutely. Actress. It's a tourism event. It's um, the difference, I guess, is that we're a freestanding event, that we raise all of our own money. The festival does and always has. Um, from the very beginning in 1997. It's a freestanding, funding wise, it's a freestanding event. So, um, but most definitely it's a tourism event. I would agree with that. Awesome. I think those are my questions. Okay. If we have a request, Jack, we will have to talk about it in other times. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Hey, thank, thanks for what you're doing for the community. You're thank welcome. You okay. Jeff Sheely, Laval of Atchison. Hey, good afternoon, commissioners. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I wish I was in person instead of uh, via Zoom, but here we are. We're still there in 2021. Um, so, we met a couple of weeks ago and uh, Commissioner Bauer had some really good questions. And so uh, what I did is I put together just a few slides. I know you guys are pressed for time. 
go over a few things that'll explain what we do now and what we have going on going forward. And then I'll stand for questions. So we'll see if this works. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's get this going. So uh, so these are just a few of the highlights of things we've done in the past. Um, a couple of things that, uh, that we didn't talk about the last time that were big, um, the Young Lungs at Play sign you're seeing and then that playground. Those are two of the key components that we've done with Tobacco Free Living here at LiveWell. And uh, commissioners are pretty instrumental um, about trying to be forward thinking with what we've done here in the county. Um, and, and tobacco uh, use has re remained high in Atchison County. We always get dinged on on the health rankings every year. But I thought it was kind of important to highlight the, the major accomplishments we've had up to this point with some pedestrian plans, trails, uh, that block party, uh, the county block party trailers was pretty popular this year as well. Um, so some pretty big highlights. Um, when I looked, uh, the last meeting we talked about, I looked at, at three things. I wanted to look at the past, present, and future for us here at Live Well, Live Atchison, and kind of what we've done. And um, you kind of know the story about us. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Um, became a nonprofit in 2014. Uh, you're looking at the four things that we still remain focused in on. Um, healthy eating, physical activity, behavioral health, and tobacco-free living, the CDR factors. And um, since 2015, we've had major strides and impacts on, uh, on our rankings. As a county, we've gone the full gamut from some of the worst in the state um, to being pretty competitive in some areas. And, uh, and like I said, uh, the last meeting, uh, when I ran the numbers since 15, we've contributed about $300,000 in grants that have gone directly out to our community. So that's whether that's schools, nonprofits, um, overall, for uh, facilities that belong to our county, we've, we've donated, uh, gone out and got grants and put it back into our community. So that's a direct impact economically. Um, in the past, we typically got $15,000 of funding from, from the commission. And then um, Eric Barber remembers this, the resolution number 2016-1420. Um, that was a resolution that we did back in 2016 that was tobacco-free recreation facilities within Atchison County. And we got uh, quite a bit of noted attention uh, state and nationwide um, with that act as uh, we've seen a lot of other counties go forward with um, their parks and recreation. So um, that was kind of a big deal. So I think that's been some good things we've done in the past. Um, now, presently, what we have going on, uh, 2020 was a unique year leading into 2021. We're still focused on the same four things. Nothing's changed with that. Um, I did break down the funding. I thought it was kind of interesting to show that, you know, 69% of our funding comes from, from grants. So we're actively, aggressively pursuing grants each and every year. And what that does, that's kind of like a balanced approach really to funding. So more of the uh, hard work is on our part. So we're now coming to the county to say, hey, we need all this help. We're asking for some minimal support. As you can see, we're getting about 13% of our funding, a little chunk uh, from, from the commission, uh, from county. And uh, in 2020, this is what we did, uh, running the numbers. So really within about two, only three months in 2020, we distributed about $19,000 in grants, um, and funding, uh, advertising that went directly towards our health equity initiatives here in Atchison County, pretty impressive for only about three months. Um, and then COVID hit and it put on hold about $27,000 and other additional projects um, that we had planned that will be resuming here in 2021. Some of them are already engaged and they're physical projects or um, some mental health fairs, a couple of things that we're doing with other nonprofits and schools, um, as well as uh, some, some county and local communities as well. And then presently, right now, you guys probably know this, our currently, current funding was dropped down to 12,500. Uh, that's where we sit at here uh, for 2021. And then um, the future, uh, Commissioner Barr asked like, well, you know, let's talk about return on investment. How do we quantify that? 
it's pretty difficult to quantify that um, when you do a lot of work with a lot of organizations. And so um, I wanted to kind of break it down and show you what we're going to do and what we're doing actively is we will pretty, pretty much aggressively pursue any grant opportunities we can um, that, that coincide with our mission and vision. So we're gonna stick with what we know and what we do best. Uh, we'll do that with other organizations as well. And we'll do federal, state, and uh, local grants fundings. And, um, and so and at the last meeting I'd updated, we are gonna pursue some pretty strategic partnerships locally. Um, we're gonna look at groups that align with our core beliefs and future. I think it's better to work more with each other instead of separate. I think uh, we become stronger and more efficient as a county overall to do those type of things. Um, kind of break down some silos and not gonna be easy, but we'll do it. We're doing it right now. Um, we are gonna create a stronger presence in our community. And um, what's nice that we occur physically as well as um, any type of advertising online, social media. Um, I think it's important to get out there in the public and support each other. So you're gonna see a bigger presence uh, from us on that. Um, one big uh, thing, two big things, um, we were contacted um, by Kansas Department of Transportation and some national U.S. bike routes um, about two running through uh, Atchison County. That's kind of a big deal. Most states don't even have one, let alone two. Um, I think there's about three in the state, but uh, we're working with them pretty heavy. I'll give some more information later this year um, on those routes going through our county. The oh. nice thing about that is um, it won't include any additional funding from anybody for anything. Um, it's They're using stuff we have in place. But what yeah, it's going to do is what? I've got a quick question while yeah. before I forget it. And yeah. uh, it's more of a statement is on those running routes that you're talking about, a couple of years ago, they had the bicycle route that came in from Holton and came in. And that was a year and a, the Edwards Road was in horrible condition and they were scheduled to do that. So please, when you're uh, talking about these routes or mapping them out, give mm -hmm. us a little bridge to find out if there's any uh, scheduled maintenance on these roads or if there's a road that's out of condition because that could be dangerous for the runners and, and all the participants. So that's just an observation that if whoever's in charge of that, they need to know that. Yeah, that's a great point, Eric. Um, I was just contacted here in the last 30 days because they kind of put stuff on hold. Uh -huh. um, they reached out to me and they said, hey, we are looking at, at running two, uh, two major U.S. bike routes. So logistics, they're basically running, um, one of the routes will go all the way from like Canada all the way down to Mexico. It'll be going through Atchison, Kansas. Wow. Um, That's kind of awesome. unique. Um, there is something possibility where the other route come through Atchison and then go east over into Missouri too. But mm -hmm. Atchison County will have two major U.S. bike routes. Um, they've said no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They want to do it. But you're right. I will coordinate with road and bridge, the routes that they're looking at are safe routes for bikes, so not on major highways if they can avoid it, um, for the most part through Atchison County. Um, but you're right, there's there's a couple of major routes through major county roads, non-US highways, so I will coordinate with them and yeah. do that. The, the good thing they did say about this, um, it opens up a door for some pretty good size additional funding to improve those roads. Once they see that you have a US bike route, it's considered an alternative form of transportation. So it may open the door for some very large CDBG grants, some stuff to improve some of these roads that are coming through our county. So that that I'll have more information as we go on for this year. They just opened that up. And then um, um, and then going further um, forward, we're going to look at targeted specific measures to improve the health in our communities. There's a lot of data from the, the county health rankings, and I'll share some with you guys. Some of them are about 40, 50 page reports. You guys don't want to see those all day, but I'll send you some stuff that are showing scientifically proven and expert proven uh, methods that we're going to target that will do that. And so what science has shown is that healthy counties are economically robust, robust counties. And so what that does is that just makes it more um, livable for citizens as well as trying to attract other people uh, to our communities, I think is is a big thing for that. And then um, 
in 2022, um, we look at support. We, you know, our, my request was for the same amount, 12,500, because we're comfortable with that. Um, that makes a lot of pressure on us to go out and actively do grants and distribute that. That's fine. Um, with 2021, it's a year of recovery and we need your support in a lot of different ways. It's not just monetary. Um, we want you to be our partner. And, um, and some of that means not necessarily funding, but, you know, working together more, having more conversations. Um, the offer still stands that we have a board position open to the county. And I, I know all three of you are busy. So if you want to designate someone, we highly suggest getting involved with that. Um, be open to suggestions, board? ideas. So if we pitch some ideas like, hey, we think we might have some ideas like US bike route, that would be a good suggestion idea, that type of stuff, or something that we can target, um, whether it's socioeconomic factors in our county, some ideas to be open to listen to those. Um, communicate with each other. Uh, we're gonna be more fluid and open uh, with you. We gave everything you requested um, and try and meet more regularly. And then strategic planning, I know you guys have done some stuff in the past, but let us be a part of that and give you some ideas on some ways maybe we can improve our county overall. Because I think we got a lot of great things to offer. We just maybe sometimes need to put the pieces of that puzzle um, together more. And, uh, you know, it's our mission. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's, it's really just to promote and sustain healthy behaviors. And we'll do that through education, community action, and advocacy is what we do. And so, um, Having said that, um, you know, that's all I have today. We do look forward to working with you in 2021. Um, what questions do you have for me? What did you do with the money from 2020 <clears throat> that we gave you? Well, we distributed out in grants, like I showed you the 990 distributed that as well as the financials. We distributed $19,000 in grants in 2020, as well as mass through Atchison County. But we gave you twelve thousand five hundred dollars. What did yes, you do sir. with that money? Well, we distributed nineteen thousand in grants. We were held up from distributing another twenty-seven thousand in grants. So that's going forward here in twenty twenty-one. Are you asking the uh, hospital, school districts, and other cities for contributions, Jeff? Absolutely. When I say strategic partners, it's a broad advance, Jack. I'm not afraid okay. to talk with anybody about Have anything. Have you had any or responses from them or? Absolutely. Okay. We're having very good conversations with people. It doesn't happen overnight. I'd like to hear that before we make our decision. Okay. I was curious when your board meetings are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our next board meeting is actually scheduled in two Fridays. We typically meet quarterly. Um, sometimes we, uh, we will meet more often if we have to do that. And, um, and so we, we've had a standing order, you know, we have an open board position. So we'd love to have somebody from the county join us and just see what it's about. So that'd be May 21st? Yes, 7.30 a.m. Do you still work with Jennifer Haynes? I haven't heard anything from Jennifer at all. The last correspondence was over a month ago when um, we were talking about CDRR grants. Yeah, I was just wondering what that color, of course, with the COVID, we haven't met much with NEKES. Uh, she uh, reports to NEKES. Uh, with, she is the facilitator for the CDERR grants, and they are kind of the pass-through pass -through agency that uh, takes care of a lot of the funding up for Donovan County. And I, I was thinking that they had, at one time, didn't they contract with um, oh, your predecessor? Um, Andrea, Andrea Clemens. Yeah. yeah, she worked. She worked with uh, with us and Andrea um, on trying to promote uh, tobacco. It was mainly targeted, I would say, towards high school. Was typically what we would mm -hmm. see um, students in high school or younger. Uh, what we're seeing with like county health rankings is that it's great um, to do that, but you also have to target uh, adults. I mean, the, the tobacco usage is pretty high among adults. We're higher above state average. So we kind of did more of a, a multi-pronged approach working with other agencies outside of the schools. I know she had discussion, I believe there was a program that dealt with women who were pregnant that smoked. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, is that ongoing? Uh, I haven't heard much program. about we really haven't had much uh, dialogue from them at all. I, I don't know where she's at with it or 
and EKS. It's kind of a weird, I know when that split off from the multi-county health department, I, I think the NEKES focuses more on other environmental things than CDRR. Is that correct? Uh, they do, but yet that's, like I say, that's the pass-through agency. Plus, we've got the uh, all of the uh, health officials from the different counties that are also participants. So, I mean, that's how the, the uh, we work that in to be kind of... Um, uh, what's the word, uh, where it's coherent with mm -hmm. the, the, the health and uh, we have the, those people on staff who can administrate and, and know what they're talking about. So uh, okay. but I was just wondering through, um, I, I being to COVID year last year, we didn't hear very much from Jennifer and I was wondering if that relationship was still there. Yeah, we haven't heard much from her other than we thought they were making some changes. I, I don't know. I haven't, we haven't really had I had some discussion maybe of a month and a half, two months ago, but haven't heard anything back since then. When, and I talked directly with KDHE, so I have some pretty strong context with them what's going on right now. And Jennifer Haynes was with KDHE, is that what you said? No, she's with C D E R R. C D R. Yeah, she works for uh, she worked for Northeast Kansas Environmental Services. They they split off from the Multi County Health Department. Gosh, how many years was that? Four or five cool. years ago. Oh, longer. That's before, well before I was on the board. So, yeah, and so um, they handle more. You know, like your your permits for like uh, septic systems. They handle a lot more environmental stuff. They kept doing the CDR grant. They took on that charge and they contracted with Jennifer, I believe, to yeah. administer Jennifer. that to yeah, five counties. Those grants. So. And is that the grant we talked about a few weeks ago that no one? no one applied for and then that cut Atchison County in our area out of that funding because correct no one, okay yeah had we known that we would have talked I, I did talk with KDHE they went back to see if they could do something with us and they said they'd already um, chosen or distributed the funds or determined who was going to get that but they told us that um, we're in track for 2022 okay um, so we that can... budget cycle for that so we're pretty excited to do that as well Okay, okay. So I'm that, on the NEKES board, and I will see how, where things stand with that. That sounds almost like another COVID fatality. Uh, that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was too bad. We wish we would have had, uh, you know, some some sort of like heads up, like, hey, this isn't going to happen, and so we could have gone after that actively. So. Okay. And you. is your meeting at the chamber boardroom? Uh, we're actually doing it at the YMCA community room at okay. seven thirty. Thanks, Jeff. What was the name of that grant that didn't get applied for? Uh, it's it's the Chronic Disease Risk Reduction Grant. CDRR grant? Okay. Yeah. Right. KDHG administers that. Okay, thank you. I'll check with... So, with Jeff, you. do you believe the county commission supports community health? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys are supporting us as well as numerous other organizations here that Health is a is a big term, Jack. It's not just about mass vaccinations or, or getting checked at a clinic or hospital. Um, it's a lot of socioeconomic stuff, and that's what we wrap ourselves around is trying to um, lift our community up. I, I think we we see a lot of issues, whether it's poverty, tobacco use, etc. I, I think health is a big term, and I think the healthier county is, the better and stronger you are. So you guys do a great job of supporting a lot of groups. It's great. I would agree with you. Mental health as well, especially the past Absolutely. year. <laughs> More than, yeah, we have guidance center on here. They're all, everybody does a great job with mental health. Okay. Stephanie Barnes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hey, Stephanie. Um, Casey, I don't know how much you know about what we do here, but um, the breakdown of our programs is that we manage the two senior centers in Ashton County. Um, town and country in Effingham, and then obviously the one across the street from City Hall here in town. We also provide Meals on Wheels and general public transportation. Um, 2020 was definitely a rough year, but we made it through. We, we stayed open minus the modification of our centers being closed. We still provided um, meals, which in 
total over the two programs was just over 40,000 meals between those picking up their meals and having home delivered. We also finished up the roof in Effingham and put on a new front awning and painted the center out at in Effingham. And we also had interior upgrades of um, new paint and carpet. So it looks really, really nice. And as of last Monday, we did reopen. Um, we've reopened on a part-time limited basis to see how things go with some restrictions in place, um, a little bit of limited activity, but we're still serving daily meals and you would not believe the response. They are super excited to be back in centers. So it's really a good thing. Um, during the 2020 year, we also um, offered shelf stable meal boxes, which was a kind of new service. We did that for roughly eight months and we're gonna put it on hold right now. Um, people were getting overwhelmed with all the shelf stable meals that they were getting. So it's kind of on hold for the temporary. Um, transportation did see a loss in ridership, obvious restrictions in place, stay at home orders, all that kind of stuff. But we were able to almost break even with our budget through the year to um, provide employment for everybody. Everybody stayed on staff. We kept our drivers on. Um, even though we had lower ridership, we were using them in other roles, whether it was delivering meals or answering the phones in the office. Um, it was tough, but I feel like our team did a really great job throughout 2020. Um, so going into 2021 and into 2022, obviously fingers crossed as the pandemic subsides, um, we'll return to full service across the board for all programs. Um, increased numbers coming back into the centers, that's a huge priority for us because um, getting seniors back to normal activities and engaged again comes back to um, the mental health and the health piece of things, as well as providing all those meals um, home delivered and in center. So we're hoping to keep up those and, and see those increases again as 2021 progresses and into 2022. Um, Transportation, again, as people are getting back out and moving around, we are hoping to partner with Access to Care, which is the second provider of Medicaid funding. We're already partnered with Logisticare, which they did have a name change, so it's actually called Mode of Care. Um, but then we started that in um, probably mid-2020 officially, and then now I'm working on the second provider. So at that point, if we get approved for this partnership, we would be able to provide transportation to anyone that has Medicaid um, insurance options. So, and other than that, we are working on replacing our oldest bus in the fleet. It is a 2013 and almost close to 100,000 miles. So hopefully in 2022, we will be looking at getting a new vehicle to replace that. Um, our budget request for 2022 is not an increase this year um, with the little bit of supplement that's come in between meals and general public transportation, I think that we will be really good in just requesting that 125 for your support. So that's pretty much it that I have. I don't know what questions you have for me and that stuff, so. Not so much a question, but uh, when you had your grand reopening at Effingham, the next morning I got a call early from a gentleman who participated and he was just so tickled. He said, it looks like a new facility. <laughs> so it really I, does. I think there's half the excitement was the fact that they were back and half was the fact that the facility was in such great shape. So um, yeah. I'm thankful for all you do. Yeah. And we do have a couple minor projects that we would like to continue to work on out there, but um, yeah, they'll be in the pipeline soon too. So um, really great stuff. So I have a question for you um, because there is no doubt that what your organization provides is um, is awesome for Atchison County. But how do you identify the users of Project Atchison? I noticed the advertising budget is fairly low. Like, how do you seek out who might need those services? And the reason I'm asking is for the fact that I'm going to use myself as an example. My grandmother lives by herself in mm -hmm. Effingham. And if, and she has her meals delivered to her door, she's 89, lives by herself. How do we find, do you think the need is greater than what you're currently serving? And how do we help? There are some that we're missing. Um, we don't send out a general advertisement. 
Um, a lot of time the referrals are coming through like area agency, the Northeast Kansas area agency sends us um, people, the hospital sends us people, word of mouth. Uh, okay. Social media is not a great thing because a lot of that generation is not connected to social media. So okay. you know, we could do better at reaching out and trying to find those people. I just haven't come up with the way to do that, I guess. Gotcha. No, I was just curious because I, I think it's a great resource um, for senior citizens. Yeah, both in Atchison is. and Effingham. So I was just curious if there's any of the population that we're missing. But I think on the meals, I think it's pretty well known what they do. I think the transportation is new and people are unsure how to contact, how to schedule uh, and that type of thing. So, uh, and, and so with your transportation, that's across the board for senior citizens in Atchison, like Atchison County? <laughs> It's actually not for just senior citizens, it's for the general public. Um, it's put in the paper, it, an, our, an ad is ran every week and we do put out flyers around town, um, that kind of thing, but it is for anybody. Um, I think we could go out and advocate for ourselves a little bit better, put ourselves out there maybe at not only county commission meetings, but um, city commission <laughs> really advertising for ourselves because it is, it's for anybody, any ages, any abilities we have three ADA compliant vehicles that are used and we run Monday through Saturday, so. And you run them to doctor's appointments, the grocery store, do you run out of county also? Um, we, we did, we added that about a year and a half ago, um, roughly, and we do run um, within 70 miles of Atchison County. It's a different fee. We charge 50 cents a mile and um, we have to schedule those as far in advance as we can because obviously scheduling conflicts, but um, yeah, we do provide within 70 miles of town. So we run to the airport, um, KU Medical Center. We do a lot in St. Joe up at Mosaic, um, Leavenworth at the VA. We've been taking people down there. So um, yeah, that's kind of new. It's not something that we don't do it every day, um, but I'd say probably once every week we go out of town somewhere. And as far as your organization, yours is the only one I'm aware of that, that offers these services in Atchison County. There's, there's no other organizations that offer what you guys do, is there? Um, no, I know that Crinton and Home Care does transportation for their clients, um, but they have to be a client with them, I believe, in some, some fashion. I don't know that setup. And then we do, um, since we are so new for the non-emergent medical transportation with the Medicaid piece of it, there are other providers coming from like Nemaha and Brown County that will come in and take an Atchison County resident to an appointment. Um, we've taken over some of that, especially the in-town things, but I anticipate that to grow for us since we are working on that second application with the other partner. Um. As far as senior citizens, do they have to be completely on their own and mobile or do you provide assistance? The only reason I'm asking is I'm thinking of our facility at Senior Village and, and just like, would that be where you could take our residents to Amberwell for an appointment or, or how does that work? Um, we actually used to provide that transportation before COVID hit and then with those changes, COVID kind of, um, uh, push that back because I think they wanted to use their own staff and, and that kind of thing. So um, in the past, it's been if they're able to, our driver will load them and get them loaded into the vehicle, but they're not a caregiver. So they will secure the vehicle and then obviously get them off of um, the vehicle and out onto the curb, but it's like a door-to-door -door service, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, have any more questions? I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thanks, Stephanie, for everything you do. We appreciate it. You're thanks, nice guys. Idea. Appreciate your time. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Keith Richard, you're back. Back. You're going by. Yeah, thank you, uh, Commissioners. I'm here with Jerry McDonald. Uh, he is our finance director and can drill down to detail as you may have questions. Uh, I can probably do some of that as well, but uh, hopefully you have the three-page letter that I wrote uh, to you, uh, sort of delineating 
our request and answering the questions that that um, you presented to us um, uh, in your appeal. And so I just want to um, again say thank you for your past support of the Guidance Center. And I might just do a brief uh, sort of overview of community mental health for the commission uh, today. Uh, but um, the Guidance Center is one of uh, 26 mental health centers in the state of Kansas. And um, the Guidance Center, which was formerly known as the Atchison Child Guidance Clinic, it started in 1937. And so it joined with uh, Leavenworth and Jefferson County over the following 20 or 30 years. And so we've been working in a, as a collaborative for that period of time. Um, Kansas statute is what uh, allows for the creation of a community mental health center. Counties can um, resolve to have a community mental health center, and they can do that by setting it up as a department of the county, or they can uh, work with other counties and create a quasi-governmental organization, or you can contract with a private not-for-profit. And uh, in our, uh, back in the 90s, we were a quasi-municipal, and then we became a private not-for-profit about 1994, 1995. The impetus for that was the ability to borrow uh, money, uh, but also to raise charitable gifts uh, from donors. And so that organization has worked for quite some time. Uh, I've been here uh, for a few years, uh, 30 to be exact. And um, when I came, uh, we were uh, serving about 1,200 patients a year. And um, we had about 42 staff members and uh, a budget of about 1.2 million dollars. And uh, today uh, we see uh, close to 5,000 patients a year, about uh, 1,200 to 1,400 of them are Atchison residents. So about 8% of the Atchison County population receive services uh, from the Guidance Center uh, at any given year. And so more over time, uh, it's hard to say how many exactly. Uh, but we do serve the three counties, uh, and uh, we have four board members from each of the three counties. Our four board members from Atchison are Aggie Asher, Megan Sheely, uh, Diana Gaddis, and Shannon Mize. And so uh, I meet with them as well as the eight other board members on the fourth Thursday of each month to consider uh, board actions around policies, funding, uh, contracts, et cetera. Uh, so, um, again, I, that's kind of just a general overview about community mental health. We provide um, a broad range of services that are dictated by our license uh, with Kansas Department of Health or Can Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services. Everything from medication management via psychiatry services uh, to therapy services by PhD psychologists, master's level providers, or uh, nurse practitioners. Uh, and then we also have case management, psychosocial group activities for everything from preschool up to high school. Uh, we also have uh, therapy staff at the Atchison Academy um, uh, in the school district there working with SED youth who otherwise might not be able to be educated in the school system, but be educated at home. And that's a program we've had for nearly 20 years. So uh, we spread out, uh, of course, across uh, the county. We have our offices there on 201 Main, and we do lease that space um, from Dennis Hine and have for almost 10 years now. Uh, so um, with that, I'll go ahead and talk about uh, 2020. I've obviously, uh, COVID affected the Guidance Center uh, pretty significantly. Uh, this time last year, I was concerned that we would be in business, that we might go bankrupt uh, due to interruption in our business model, which was all office-based, interfacing with patients. Uh, but we quickly modified <clears throat> our work and, and be began doing telehealth for just about every service that we deliver. And we also applied for a paycheck protection loan, which we received, and uh, it was fully forgiven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we are a, a not-for-profit, I also went to task to write as many other grants um, for additional dollars uh, from other private entities and public entities. And we did uh, achieve um, a good uh, number of grants throughout the year. And um, financially, the year uh, we, we finished certainly you know, on positive territory, which uh, was perhaps the only 
um, silver lining to 2020 for us. But uh, again, no uh, staff members lost their jobs uh, during that time. Uh, we sustained everyone's position. Um, uh, we kept our offices open for scheduling and emergencies throughout that period of time. And uh, just from uh, March to June, did we do all telehealth? And we still do some telehealth today for patients who are high risk or for those who prefer it. So it's given us kind of a new avenue for service delivery as a result of, of, of COVID. We've learned some new lessons about our ability to deliver care. Uh, and in some cases found that some clients prefer telehealth uh, to face-to-face -face for convenience and to remove the travel barriers, uh, et cetera. So uh, with that, um, I, I guess unlike some of my colleagues on here today, I'm asking for a slight increase. I, I feel a little bit uh, anxious about that, but it's a small increase, 5% of uh, what you have historically given us uh, in the past. So a total allocation of $76,650, which is about $4.25 per capita, uh, which when you consider that uh, compared to other counties, the other 105 counties, uh, still about $3 below what the county average contribution is for a community mental health center. But we don't want to ask for more than, than what we need at any given time, obviously. And uh, so I'll, I'll take a pause um, and before I launch into my, the next part of my request because it is fairly extensive and takes uh, uh, some introduction and further explanation. Any questions so far? How many staff did you say are currently at the Guidance Center? 145. And those are all in Atchison County? Oh no, that's across the three counties. In Atchison, I think we're right at about 45, 47, okay. something like that. We serve about 5,000 patients. I said that I think in a staff of 145 and our budget uh, this past year was a little over uh, nine and a half million. Okay, well, let me talk about um, what's a little bit about history and um, um, what we're looking to do in the future. Um, you know, since 2008, the Medicaid rates of reimbursement have not been increased and about 80% of our revenue has come from Medicaid. So it's been hard to balance our budget for the last uh, 10 plus years. In addition to that grant funding, which was going up, went down during the Brownback years. And it's just this year that we begin seeing the same level of grant funding from the state that we saw in 2008. So uh, it's been very, very hard to fund a community mental health center across Kansas. And there have been some expansion of programs, uh, federal programs that other states have taken advantage of that Kansas did not, but now is prepared to. One of the things that happened also um, about six years ago was uh, the state hospital at Osawatomie went on moratorium for admissions. They got in trouble with Medicare I uh, lost their Medicare certification and millions and millions of dollars because of patients being admitted perhaps inappropriately or they're not being able to care for them. So they had to go from 220 beds to, to less than 140 beds. And so we began seeing patients back up into the community as a result of that moratorium on admission. And um, I, I think Pat can probably testify to the truth of this, that it continues to be a significant problem here at Atchison Hospital Amberwell as they uh, screen psychiatric patients and have to hold them waiting for an open bed at the state hospital. Well, one of the things that the state has done, they have opened up more beds, but I just checked today, there's eight patients on the waiting, on the waiting list just for, for Osawatomie right now. And so they might wait uh, two hours, they might wait a week at some place uh, in the state waiting for a bed to open up. And there are some community beds that the state is now paying for across the state. And um, so there, that, that opened up a little bit, but there's still, there's eight patients waiting for whatever bed the state is paying for right now. One of the additional services that they have identified that helps uh, to 
relieve the pressure on the state hospital is the creation of crisis stabilization centers. And uh, that's the, the appeal and that we're, what we're trying to get here for our region uh, right now. Crisis stabilization center will have sobering beds for patients who are in mental health crisis. We'll also uh, provide 24 hour uh, crisis stabilization for patients who just need help getting through a tough time. Uh, suicidal thoughts come and go. And so they need uh, time to work through some of those. And so patients who don't necessarily need hospitalization, but who are presenting at high risk can go to a crisis stabilization center staffed by professional staff 24 seven to have their problems uh, addressed. And in some cases, patients might stay a week or two or even three as they anticipate finding uh, a home uh, or a place to be following that crisis. There are crisis stabilization centers, of course, in Wichita and Topeka. There's a new one opening in Lawrence. There's one in Manhattan and there's one in Salina as well as Wichita. And about two years ago, I started asking the secretary of KDADS if, if our region could be next. And she said, yes. And so I've submitted a budget to, to um, the state for them to fund about 80 or 90% of, of the crisis stabilization center that we would, we would house in Leavenworth at the former uh, Cushing Memorial Hospital. They have space there now, and it would actually probably use the former psychiatric hospital or psychiatric wing space because it was designed for that. And uh, we would, that's the place where we would have patients from a seven county region come. So it's not just, they, the state didn't just want it to be for Leavenworth, they wanted it to be for our entire region, including the four counties served by Kansas Mental Health Center to the north of us. Uh, <clears throat> the state of course wants to see if there's any uh, uh, support that we can garner from counties to help fill out that budget. And so uh, we've been working in Leavenworth for about two years with a, a mental health task force. We've been presenting to the county commission that we would like to ask them for $150,000 to help support this. And they're very open-minded about that. I have that appeal into them officially now. A second time, the last time we, we dropped it because of COVID, uh, but it's in there a second time. And uh, we're hopeful that they're going to, to fund um, at least that portion of the expense of this program. So we wanted to go and ask the other counties for a similar uh, contribution. And if we look at that from a, a per capita contribution, $150,000 is $1.84 to the citizens uh, of, of Leavenworth County. So $1.84 times the population of Atchison County uh, brings a request to you uh, to help support this. <clears throat> of an additional $29,574. Again, this is for a service that doesn't exist now. It's brand new. And this is about a $1.2 million uh, program operation. It's considered an outpatient program by KDADS, <clears throat> but it would receive uh, patients from all seven counties. And I know that Atchison County needs it because I feel calls from Atchison emergency room at least twice a month looking for additional help and assistance uh, with hard to place patients and I do what I can uh, to make that happen. So uh, let me take another breath and, and see what kinds of questions you might have about that. I know that that's a significant request. I know it's um, and I'm also have this request out to seven to, to six other counties now. I'm going to go with the director of Kansas Mental Health Center to each of those four counties asking for their fair share at $1.84 per capita. So let me take a break and see what questions or criticisms you might have of that uh, proposal. So that would be a yearly expense? It would, I think. Uh, well, <clears throat> so um, in the initial year or two, it would be. We're anticipating the ability to bill some third party payers for some services. Crisis intervention service is a Medicaid reimbursable service. So if we have a patient who's referred who has Medicaid, we can bill for that service and for that stay. Now, you know, $150 isn't gonna cover that every day, which is what the billing code would allow, but it would help us to build that budget to reduce 
uh, additional county support in the future years. Uh, and there is an, another development, which I put in the, um, my materials here to you, which I'll share when you're ready, because uh, that, that sort of feeds into this as well. Uh, so my question, whatever the same as Eric's, is this a long-term commitment? Is this a long-term commitment? I, I can't say that it won't be, but my hope is that it wouldn't be. Um, right now, the, as I talked about the funding woes of community mental health centers, um, this year there was legislation passed uh, that our association of mental health centers uh, uh, took to the, to the legislators to help us to become a certified community behavioral health center state. And that is a federal designation which raises the bar on quality, performance, access uh, across the board, but it also changes the way services for those patients are reimbursed. Currently, we, we deliver a service, we get paid a certain rate for that service. In the new CCBAC model, which has been now approved by the legislature to be implemented by May of 2022, we will be paid based on our cost. So this program, as we build it into our cost structure, would be covered by that prospective payment system from Medicaid into the future. So uh, what a novel idea, you know, paying for mental health, what it actually costs. Uh, you know, I've been sitting in my seat 30 years trying to always garner enough money to have enough to do what we need to do. But uh, this, is, this is gonna bring a new, um, new system of care and it's going to bring a revenue stream to support it. Um, you know, we aren't paying our staff uh, the, the way that they should be paid based on their levels of training and education. Uh, to give you an example, a bachelor level case manager that works for the guidance center starts right at about $31,000 a year with a four-year college degree. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have a college degree to earn $31,000 a year. Um, uh, there are a lot of jobs out there, and yet they've, they're committed to that. Uh, but we see fewer people coming in to the profession because of the salaries. And the same is true for our master's level and our PhD level salaries, as well as our physician staff. So this will help us to grow our budget in a way that our costs would be covered via Medicaid, which is federal dollars in the state system. So it's basically Medicaid expansion just for mental health. And uh, I think that's why it appealed to the legislature this year. And um, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's going, it's going to happen. And we're trying to, right now we've written a one and a half million dollar grant to get started on becoming a CCBHC. So that when the prospective payment system comes, um, we will be ready to hit the ground running and uh, already have our costs up because of these additional funds. So that's my, uh, my presentation to you. I know that there are probably a, a lot of questions, there's a lot of detail, there's a lot of detail in it yet that I don't even understand uh, as the director, but I understand it enough to know that uh, this is the direction that the nation is going. Um, uh, SAMHSA has been funding these grants to the tune of two and a half million. Uh, we only asked for one and a half million, hoping to come in under the radar and get more attention from them. And we believe we can do it for that. But um, that's in addition to the crisis stabilization center that we're talking about. I'll have my first initial, when I was reading this, my first initial response or reaction to it was, well, on one hand, the legislature is wanting to restrict what county commissions across the state have been spending. They put tax lids on, they are now putting the truth in, uh, in uh, governance things on and wanting us to spend less. So then they turn around and they ask for county input on things that they used to take care of. Uh, so that was my first initial response. I, uh, I get that, I get that. Uh, so, you know, on one hand, I hate to open up a whole new avenue of spending. I know it's needed, but I'm not there yet about where 
I, I can't tell you where I'm really going to fall on this, but uh, another thing was they named seven counties that will be uh, served by this facility. Right. But will they take uh, patients from other facilities or other counties that aren't listed? No. Will, I mean, is that, I mean, set in stone or if there's a need from Kansas City's close that they would be uh, starting to ship patients out from there if they're in need of, of space? No, my understanding is that the guidance center controls that patient population, that um, the, the support from the state is, is dictated just for our area. And uh, certainly our area has priority for admission. And um, I know Leavenworth and Atchison are gonna be the closest physically to it. So probably are going to be using it the most often. Also have to have the highest population centers of the seven counties. So I do expect Leavenworth and Atchison to be major uh, feeders of patients to, that, to this program. Maybe uh, I'll ask that question a little different. Is there a, a need such as this in the larger Kansas City uh, area that are they being served well or do, or do they need bed space also? No. So um, Rainbow Services Inc., uh, RSI, um, basically they're the ones who created the very first crisis stabilization service right there in Wyandotte County. And they serve uh, Wyandotte and Johnson County and they have space available. They're rarely full because they created a fairly expansive operation there. Uh, we can send, Leavenworth can send some patients there if they have availability, uh, but that's pretty rare. Uh, and they did reject an Atchison uh, patient uh, about a month ago. <laughs> so um, they can expect um, similar rejection from us should they request. Okay. But, uh, I was but, just uh, curious whether that would have been, you know, by the time we would have a resident or a patient that needed it and it would be full. Yeah. You know, and that was just, I was wondering if it was a reserved for these counties only. So thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, look, answer me this question. The Cushing Hospital is owned by the County of Leavenworth. It is. And when they give you 150,000, is that in lieu of rent or is it cash or? Well, I'm asking them for cash. Um, so, but I haven't presented this officially that my, my meeting with them is in two weeks. Um, so I don't know exactly how, where they're going to land on this, but I'm hoping that in addition to the space uh, and the utilities, uh, that, that they'll also provide the cash as well. So you're going to ask them for the, the facility for no charge? Yes. And the utilities? Yes. Okay. They, they're, well, they're putting quite a few... Um, county departments there. They're putting the, the Council on Aging at, at Cushing. And you may have read that they recently leased the entire third floor to a for-profit mental health uh, psychiatric hospital system, Center Point, And they're going to be paying significant rent. And so I think most of the county's costs for operations are going to be covered in the uh, rental from that hospital. And so that's why they can offer uh, that discount. They're also going to be downsizing some other facilities that they presently own that they'll no longer need. Uh, so I think, I can't speak for them, um, but I, I think uh, their operational costs won't be that significantly more or might even be less by moving to Cushing. I have a question. Are there any other organizations um, in Atchison County providing the services that the Guidance Center provides? Uh, well, uh, Atchison Community Health Clinic has to have mental health services, and uh, they're presently providing school-based therapy and some, um, um, some mental health counseling at their office um, on the hill there. Uh, but Stevie and I have been meeting here recently as we talk about this CCBHC grant that we're likely or hope, hopefully we're going to get, there are some integrated or holistic primary care responsibilities within that. And I told Stevie, we probably want to contract with him and his staff to do that work. And that's in all three counties. So we, we want to collaborate with them in the future. He has also asked me um, 
he can't find providers either. Uh, he needs another provider at the school. So we're advertising for another master level clinician half the time to sell to him to deliver that service uh, at the high school. So we're, we are definitely working together. Stevie used to work for the guidance center, used to be our clinic director there uh, in Atchison. So uh, we're close and we share board members as well. A couple of board members, I think. Gotcha. And Hope Family Therapy, um, are you familiar with them in Atchison? And then I've I'm- heard of them. Okay. And then I was just curious because the crisis stabilization center would be open for everyone in Atchison County. Uh So do you guys have like a mental, because mental health is obviously a high priority. Um, and especially coming up, you know, coming out of a year of isolation with COVID and all of that. Mm -hmm. So do you have a mental health group or organization in Atchison County where you work together with, because I know there's, you know, per, personal providers, um, Hope Family Therapy, mm-hmm. your organization, the Community Health Clinic. Do you guys have a mental health board where you're working together and, and discussing needs and streamlining some of that stuff? Just for me as a county commissioner, it's hard to um, look at one organization um, for funding, but it, if it's a collaborative effort from the public perspective of here's the need and these are all of the organizations that are dealing with mental health in Atchison County and giving us some metrics to to stand behind decision making when it comes to to funding, if that if that makes sense. Right, right. You know, honestly, the only entity we've worked closely with is uh, Atchison Community Health Clinic. We did from the beginning and um, continue to do so. There's a multi, uh, there is a multi-agency task force that meets monthly, which we participate in to, to talk about service and referral needs across systems. And so that's, that's ongoing. And, and John Att Clark, my clinic administrator in Atchison, belongs to that and attends that. So that's the only collaborating group uh, that is consistently met over time. I'm also on the JCAB board, Jan, John's, or the the Juvenile Justice Advisory Board. And so uh, that's a dual board between Atchison and Leavenworth counties. And so those board meetings uh, rotate between Leavenworth and Atchison. So I'm rubbing elbows with the community corrections and court service officers uh, there on a routine, regular basis. And and Johnette is on the Adult Community Corrections Board. So that's where some of our communication uh, happens. Uh, We also have a, a a program called Project Change, which we have a therapist who works with referrals from the Adolescent uh, Community Corrections Group. Um, it's an evidence-based program uh, just for, for youth and they're court ordered, court referred. So that's how we collaborate there as well. Okay, awesome, thank you. I've got one more quick question. Uh, is there an age limit on the patients? Or is this for juvenile uh, People also, or is it uh, uh, just adults or? The Crisis Stabilization Center? Yes. It's just adults, 18 and over. 18 and over, okay. Uh-huh. So Keith, I would really like if you would update us about the action of the Leverworth County, of other counties. Sure. I, I think this is a case where you're getting to come back and update us. Yeah. Maybe sometime towards the end of June or something. Yeah, absolutely. You could schedule it with our clerk. Um, I'd like to have an update. We're not yeah. going to really make this decision until well into July, so uh, we'd like to have more information. Absolutely, and I understand that. I, I have no idea how the other counties are going to respond. Um, I, I expect a favorable response from Leavenworth County. Uh, the others, I'm not certain until well, I you get. Realize there. we're between a rock and a hard spot. Here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, well, and I think it would be helpful if you would send me uh, or send us an email maybe explaining the Osawatomie statistics and what this crisis stabilization center will provide to our region. And then that'll allow us to have some of these conversations with other mental health providers in Atchison County, just to leverage the need or understand that a little more county-wide, I guess. Okay.
probably what I will, uh, one of the statistics I'll pull is the number of mental health crises at the at Amberwell emergency room and how many, how many patients they've held uh, past the 24 hour time limit. Uh, that, that'll be a good piece of data for you. Right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Okay. I think we're going to take a uh, 10 minute recess till um, 50. So we're going to stand in recess. Thank you. Check the recording. Okay, we're back from recess. Teresa McInerney, are you still there? Or did you go home? <laughs> Oh, there she's here. Oh, well. Okay. Is she here? Okay, she's I'm here. Alive. Okay. Yeah. You're on. Okay, well, um, I'm Teresa McInerney with Northeast Kansas Enterprise Facilitation, and uh, thank you so much for letting me uh, come here today and virtually, <laughs> and uh, thank you for your support. Um, Atchison is one of our five original counties that we cover, Atchison, Brown, Donovan, Jackson, and Nemaha, and so, and you have been from the start, so. We've been on the road since June of 2003 in the region and still have the original five counties. And so thank you so much for your support and your support of entrepreneurship in your county. Um, I know I sent a pretty detailed report. I hope y'all received that. Um, we had a, a big year uh, while everyone else was shutting down, we were heating up um it got pretty pretty uh busy during the during the pandemic with businesses in different stages you know some paralyzed some revving it up a thousand percent some completely changing their business models um to to still compete um so it was it was a struggling year but it was it was a good year kind of, you know, if you can say it was a good year. It was a good year for our organization because we made contact with a lot of clients um, that we've helped over the years. A lot of clients um, that returned to us for aid in all the, uh, all the new uh, programs and things like that that came out over the year. And, uh, and a lot of new clients, uh, you know, it was, it, you would think, it was a bad year to start a business, but honestly, a lot of people that had time to finally pursue what they love. And so it was exciting for us to uh, get with a lot of clients that finally had the time to put their plan to paper and move forward. So um, I know you've got our numbers there. Our, our clients are at 1,539. Um, as of the third, anyway, they've gone up now. Um, new and expanded businesses retained or uh, expanded, 278. Jobs created or retained, or over 1,000 now, 1,015 and, and rising. Um, Tune-ups, we did a lot of tune-ups uh, over, the, over the year with clients that uh, were revamping, like we just talked about. So um, any questions on our program or the services we provide. So I, I have a quick question because I was following along with that part where you were saying job jobs created and retained over a thousand and rising. My yes. sheet says 315 and clients say 419. Oh, that's per county. I'm sorry. I was just saying the totals for the region. Oh, okay. You're saying yeah. per region, not yeah. for Atchison County. Yeah, and you can see Atchison exceeds all the other counties um, by a lot. I wanna say clients are like 27% uh, of all of our five counties are in Atchison. 
So you have a big pie share there <laughs> of, of the services. Plus, you know, the businesses are higher, the jobs are higher. Um, yeah, I think all the stats there are, are much higher for, for Atchison. And uh, you have a very active board here. Um, we depend on our community resource board and they're all volunteers uh, that are in it for no benefit to themselves, but only to help people in the region. And when we help the region, we help, you know, each county, each county helps the region. So uh, it's become quite the solid network within those five counties. Um, I get a lot of questions and I, I give out a lot of resources. I've kind of become a uh, 411 or whatever for, for all the counties, they want to know what's going on there, what can we do to help that, or uh, who's who can I talk to in Atchison, or who can I talk to in Nemaha that can do this, so I do a lot of referrals as well. And who are the Atchison board members? Um, we've got 18 members, hold on, I jotted some down, just in case you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, uh, and, and forgive me, I just jotted these while I was listening to other folks. So um, Tracy Moult, Laura Hanke, Doug Chowder, who Doug, Doug is on this, on this Zoom waiting with me for this afternoon. Uh, Jim Rowland, uh, Louise Regenstein, Justin Brejean, uh, Becky, Berger, Elizabeth Collins is our, our vice, our, I'm sorry, our president of our board. Uh, Tammy Hayes, Sarah, uh, Susan Turnbull, Mike Regenstein, Mike McCrory, Dr. Bryant from Benedictine, um, Larissa Rice, Dr. Rice, uh, Jim Rowland, oh, I think I already said him, Andrea Clement, Jackie Brejean, Mary View. Um, I think that's all that's all the ones I jotted down and then I think I sent send my uh, Jack Bauer was on our charter a charter board member so he he was around at the very beginning I believe Jack weren't you on the charter uh, commission that started this I, I was yeah so we still depend on Jack once in a while and then Casey I know you've been to our board meeting I think you came to the last board meeting before the pandemic shut us down for virtual. <laughs> I did. I was part of the taste test for the up and coming excitement at the River House. So. Right. And we just had another board meeting there last Thursday. And I think there was even more people at this one and different folks. And uh, it was very exciting. I can talk about it now because it's out there. Um, the River House will be reopening. We've been working a lot with that client over this year because she finally had time to do a lot of work. And um, it was funny when I was taking things in for the board meeting the, last Thursday night, how many people stopped that were going for a walk. It was a beautiful sunny night and everybody was out uh, walking down by the river and everybody's like, what's going on? So it was exciting to see the public uh, it just can't wait for that to open as well. So we um, did all our meetings virtually this year, uh, all but a few. And I think I notated that in all my, in my correspondence with you all. Uh, we, we did virtual for safety uh, and um, we had some in-person meetings now that we're, we've started back in person now that a lot of our board members are vaccinated. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I was reading, you had mentioned the clients that you have permi permission to mention and all of them, except I, I'm not sure about Holt Grave age back, back, but all of them are in the city of Atchison. Could you give a little snapshot of like what you've done for them? Um, just to, for the public to kind of understand what, how you helped them. Sure. Um, and we've helped several in the county as well. Um, I think I listed some, but I apologize if I didn't list all of them, there's so many. But um, the main thing we meet with, the first meeting is usually just to find out their basic concept and uh, where they're at with it. I mean, some people, it's just a dream. Uh, they wanna see if it'll cash flow. Some people have already put rent money down on a deposit on a building or, you know, gone forward. Uh, and some folks are in full business mode. They're 
already doing business. But for the most part, what, where we come in, a lot of folks need that um, a step back because you get tunnel vision when you're in business, you know, and you, you just don't know what you don't know. And so we go over wherever they need. And so it's very important that we're person-centered. And so it all revolves around each person's needs. So um, it's hard to pinpoint, but a lot of business plans are written. Um, we, we offer business plan uh, writing services. Like I don't so much write it for them, but I do an outline with them. And then I review what they're doing and then critique and help and, and mold that, uh, help them to, to uh, get a, a good solid business plan written. The reason being, I mean, I think it's a good exercise whether you're gonna borrow money or not, but lenders need to see a written business plan. And, and honestly, even if they're not going for financing, I recommend it just for their own um, well-being just so they can see all those details and get it out on paper because there again you don't know what you don't know maybe you haven't thought of some of those details uh, so business plan writing is an intricate uh, integral part of our plan and or of our program and um, we also help with uh, filling out a financial forecast and so we can do that goes along with your lenders right you want to see a financial forecast there again even if you're not looking for financing I think it's a really good idea to do a financial forecast for your own, for your own peace of mind, and so that you go in eyes wide open. So one of our biggest, you know, our biggest um, goals is to have folks very aware. Uh, I mean, you can't plan for everything, right? I don't think in any business plan, in the challenges part, we put pandemic, right? So you can't always do that, but. But we go over a lot of things to what could go wrong, things like that. But that financial forecast is a real eye opener. And a lot of clients are so excited to see, wow, this really, this could make money. And this is really feasible, right? We keep it very real. And, um, and a lot of clients are like, uh-oh, this is not where I wanted to be. You know, this is not going to replace my salary if I choose to leave my job or, or do this. So uh, we go back and look at costs. We go look at profit centers. So sometimes maybe they just need a different profit centers to make it cash flow. And then I've had clients that said, well, I was gonna invest my whole retirement into this. Now I see it's not going to yield what I need it to yield. So that's good to know. I'm, you know, I'm gonna keep working or I'm going to you know, do something else. So um, it's, a, it's an eye opening eye-opening uh, program, I think. It really helps people be more aware of the pitfalls and the and the good things, you know, associated with owning a business. And you're providing all of that for our businesses for free? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We work with a lot of the bankers um, with the e-community loan. They recommend that they work with us, but so many banks in the region, it's, uh, it's they don't want to say no, but a person comes in with an idea all written on a napkin or something. And so they're like, call, you know, call them and they will help you get your business plan and your forecast together and, and things like that. We also refer people to programs. Um, this past year, you know, there's so many resources that no one knows about. So a lot of times we'll bring in the Department of Commerce or we'll bring in uh, other programs or resources that can help them since there again, since we've been around so long, um, we're pretty well connected to a lot of resources. Um, our, our board members are all professionals. And so they consult with our clients at no charge to no benefit of themselves. Um, we have some attorneys on the board. We have um, accountants and, and marketing people and, and all those folks that can help our clients uh, get started. So. And are all five counties that signed up in June of 2003, do they all contribute the same amount each year? Per capita, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do any of the cities contribute? Well, each county, when this started, came up with a different, a different uh, model for giving their support. And so uh, Jackson County, and Donovan County and 
Let's see. Yeah, those two counties do total county. Now, when Atchison started, and I could be wrong because I wasn't the first facilitator, but um, it was the city, I believe, and the county. And then, then something happened in 2010 or something where the county and the city uh, divided up some, some obligations and the county got custody of us. <laughs> so that's how it was explained to me. So the county uh, took, took our program. So, but to answer your questions in, in Brown and Nemaha, they break it up between the cities and the county together. So, um, so each county did what, what worked for them to pay, to do the support. And each, I mean, I always knock on wood this time of year, but each county is very happy with our services and have continued to uh, contribute. The only funder we've ever lost was the state of Kansas. And I think somebody mentioned this earlier, um, they took away a lot of uh, a lot of funding to nonprofits a few years that uh, eight years ago, seven, six years ago. Um, I can't remember, but it's been a while. But when they did away with the business taxes um, in Kansas, they they took a lot of that money from the nonprofits. I see. Nemaha County only contributed five hundred and forty-five dollars. Oh no, that was a separate. That was. Um, that was for a grant. They they had spark money, and I'm trying to remember why they sent that. It was for oh, it was reimbursing Nemaha County and Donovan counties were the only counties that allowed us to apply for uh, the spark money. And so all I did was turn in my receipts for um, things I used for virtual meetings, like my Zoom account. This is off your sheet. This says income, and it has just the counties and the cities listed. Jackson County gave twelve thousand. Donovan twelve thousand one hundred eighty-seven. Atchison eleven thousand five hundred. And there's also four cities listed. And Nemaha County is only five hundred and forty-five dollars. Well, I apologize. I'm not the treasurer. That was from Gary Satter, our uh, financial. Uh, our financial mm -hmm. and you know, 2020 report. Page one of one on the very best, best transaction detail report. I should have printed 2020, January through December. Mm -hmm. One of them might have paid early or late too, but Nemaha does pay uh, over 11,000 uh, total. Now that $500 was for a grant that I applied for, I believe, unless it's unless it's listed incorrectly. So how and, many board members contribute personally? I'm how sorry. How many board members contribute personally? Personally? Yeah. Probably three with a significant amount. They, they contribute a lot of their services. They travel from counties to counties to meet with clients. But as far as financial support, I think there's three. And this custom transaction detail report, mine is, or um, do you have one current for 2021 to see who your supporters were this year? Yeah, if they've paid yet, a lot of them have paid. Some of them haven't uh, yet, they will. So, um, so it was, cause it shows like Amberwell, Rainbow, all of those. Right, and so we have not received contributions from Amberwell and Rainbow, I don't believe yet in 2021. Okay. And hopefully we will, but those are the, you know, we really can't depend on those um, random, uh, you know, we had another uh, donation that we can't depend on every year. So um, that's the, that's the, uh, the reason why we do need the support from the counties. And we were lucky enough to uh, get the Heartland Challenge Grant as a part of a regional, econ let me say it correctly, Regional Economic Vitality Consortium um, put together with our project in Kansas. We're the only ones in Kansas. And then um, Missouri Western School of Business who got a, the lion's share of the money and then um, two other programs that are like ours that are enterprise facilitation programs in Missouri. 
And so we got a portion of that. Um, but there again, nothing's guaranteed. So are there any other, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, are there any other organizations in Atchison County that offer what you're offering to businesses as far as entrepreneurial coaching or anything like that? Now, Benedictine, you know, with their students and things like that, and we partner with them and do a lot with Benedictine with their students, and I'll go up there and, and help with some of their things, but um, as far as the service, there is not, not that I know of, I, I, I just, nope. Thank you for that. That was my last question. Is there anything else? I, I don't. There you go. Thank you for coming on, Teresa. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you for your support. And um, we are asking for seventeen thousand five hundred for uh, two thousand twenty-two, and um, that has been our request for the last several years. Um, so we haven't raised it. <laughs> thank you. Teresa, just I just let you know, one commission cannot. You said you like a commitment for three years. We can't commit another commission to anything. I mean, it's we're, so uh, every time there's election, we might have a change of commission. We may not, but we might have. Yeah. Sure. Hey, I did want to ask Doug. Doug Chowder is uh, an attorney that lives here in Atchison. That's on our board. And I don't know if he's free. He's turned off his camera. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Sorry. <laughs> I know we've been waiting, right? Thank you for waiting. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to our presentation before we sign off with the commissioners here. Oh, um, I don't really have anything to add. I'm, I'm just a board member on the uh, on the tip, the foundation, and and I've just found it's been a, a a really good benefit um, for a lot of the businesses starting up. I think having additional resources is a, is a, a great supplement for uh, for them. And I think this is something that, that's valuable to all of the counties and Atchison County in particular. Thank you, Doug. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Okay, Joe, are you on there? Bye, Teresa. Were you talking to Jamie and Joe? <laughs> Joe no. Tolliver. Okay, sorry. I'm looking for Joe. I, I can't. I don't see him on. Well, there's a phone, phone, phone number. Is that That's a three seven zero. Yeah. So. How do you pronounce his last name? Tolliver. Tolliver. Okay. No, Tolliver, are you there? Who does the symbol next to that phone number? Is that just, is that a muted phone? I think it's just phone yeah. instead of a Zoom. Right? Phone. I've just yeah, never I seen it. Ask him that, that is Joe Tolliver's cell phone. Okay. Okay. He probably, he may, probably uh, sleeping. <laughs> <clears throat> he may not know how to unmute himself. I didn't ask to unmute. Can you help him, Wes? Um, Kaylee, you should be able to. All right, to can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? now? And that could be a tagline. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes. yes. I hear you. Okay. Well, this is Joe Tolliver. Sorry about that. Didn't know how to push star six. Um, I just want to thank you all, the commissioners, for your long-time support of the Ashton County Fair. And we're uh, not asking for an increase or anything. We're just the same amount we've been getting for a long time. I, just, you know, I guess you all got the budget in front of you. Or, uh, anyway, <clears throat> on the general fund, we usually get $7,787.16. We just spent $7,500 of that for painting the roof on the show barn and the goat barn. Now that should take care of all the roofs have all been painted within the last several years. 
but we are looking at getting a new electric hot water heater we've had a gas one but since spider shell got off we haven't turned it on because he always took care of that with because he worked for the kcpl or the evergy and anyway it would become a hassle working with them doing that so we're going to go electric get our hot water heater going again and then we get seven thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars for a premium account and uh, we spent last year on expenses eight thousand one hundred one dollars and three cents for the premium and this year the carnival isn't gonna i don't know if it'll ever come back but uh we are looking at entertainment which is costing of course money on one of the nights we got a guy, I don't remember his first name, his last name is Snook. He was on The Voice. So we're going to have that as entertainment on Saturday night, I believe, or Friday night. And then Eric Dillon, he's going to come back and perform on the other night. Which when, when he done it a couple of years ago, we had a tremendous turnout. So I'm hopefully, and as of right now, unless COVID breaks out again, we're going to go on forward with uh, the fair like always so joe so, this is jack bauer did you nick did you say you were gonna have the carnival or you weren't gonna have the carnival no we are not gonna have the carnival because the guy that has been coming for well he didn't come last year of course but the other three years i think before that we wouldn't he wanted us to change our date and put it clear up into last of July, middle of July. And, and then he couldn't even, you know, if we change it this year, he couldn't guarantee it that we'd be there all the time. And I think that's not a good idea to be moving your event, you know, from year to year. And there was no guarantee on anything. So we decided to forego the carnival and getting another carnival seems like impossible if you guys know of one i mean we're still up for having one if we can find one but i suppose the covid hurt their business really bad i know the guy we had he was really crying last year at you know last fall we talked to him but uh he's got to stay where he's got lots of people and we just wasn't working into his schedule so we're going to we're coming up with other entertainment i mean we we got the concert on friday night and saturday night and then we got some other things that we're looking at doing through the week along with the 4-h you know that's really what it stems about anyway is the kids and the projects but we want people to come out and have a good time in the evening too I you guess you got any questions. Are you going to have the parade? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's the same other than the carnival. Okay. Yep. Well, I just got We're to having the parade. My, my grandchildren. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm going to take them there without a carnival. <laughs> well, we're, we're looking at Derek uh, Franklin. He has bouncy houses. And he's come to our last board meeting. And we're looking at that. If we can staff all the bouncy houses with somebody that can run them. I mean, he's not interested in running them. He wants to bring them out there. He'll set them up and he'll take them down. But he's not interested in running them. But we still, we got a committee formed that is uh, trying to find groups or people that are, you know, wanting to make a fundraiser or you know, to do that. And we got a meeting tomorrow night. Hopefully we'll uh, have some answers for that. That's well, one I thing. Might, we're. I might mention that I had a conversation with Jim Rowland well, a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking to him about how important the fair, fair was there in Atchison. And, and he's the Chamber of Commerce CEO. And he said yeah. he'd be happy to help you with some marketing for that event under tourism. I think somebody just has to contact you. 
Okay. Well, we we do pay dues to the Chamber of Commerce, so yeah, we need to. I'll get a hold of him and yeah, do he's what really he really uh, open minded and really would probably love to work with you. Okay. Well, and thanks he's a for little that. bit of a gentleman farmer too, so <laughs> well, that that makes a difference. Are, yeah. You say his name's Jim Rowland. Jim Rowland. R O W L A N D. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, any other questions or what are you thinking? I was just curious who the board members are and where you guys have your board meetings. Well, we we have them at Effingham. We've had them in the winter time. We have them at the Blue Building or the where the library is down across from the bank. Most of the time it's Blue Building. And then uh, some t in the summertime, if it's nice, we'll go to the city park and have them over there. And as far as board members, I believe there's, I don't know, 13 or 14. Okay. Uh, there's Kristen, me and um, Kristen Webb. To, is, yeah, I was trying to remember back at the board members when we did the project action out there. <laughs> um, you don't have to list all 13 or 14. I was just trying to understand other ways maybe the county commissioners i mean outside of the the request but how we can help support the fair and getting i mean i remember back when the beer gardens and <laughs> all the tuesday i mean that was what we look forward to yeah. we the oh, break, yeah. was that to the friday night still does it switch to friday yeah night? yeah okay. it's, yeah it's on friday night which as a I mean, mom, we're not i, I mean like, we're <laughs> yeah we're not uh against the beer garden i mean it might happen i mean that's kind of up to the business the does nest he's been operating it i mean if he wants if he feels like he can do that um he's more than welcome to put up a tent and and do that or he can just run it out of his you know down there at his uh, establishment anything else you can think of from a county commissioner because to me the atchison county fair like the commissioners should have you know help in any sort of way anything that stands out to you that we can do to help support it well i needed a little more time to think about that i suppose yeah, that's but fine. Uh, uh i can't think of anything right off the top of my head but you know like I say just your support means a lot you know uh coming out and riding in the parade uh the parade is seems like a pretty big deal uh we get a, a lot of people show up for it and and i wish we had a carnival uh, it does help but it uh used to be a money maker you know years ago but then it become an expense and now it seems like can't even get them to come for us i don't know how the like the Amelia Earhart whether they was still gonna that carnival still comes to them or i wonder if they're having any trouble well, they're not even having the event this year. Yeah. So no, I know that, but I just wonder when they go to have their event again, I wonder if their carnival will be available. It'll be interesting to see. They might be back. If they have, like you say, there was yeah. a lot of them had very hard year last year. Oh, yeah. They shut down, and who, not too many businesses can go, you know, uh, over a year without nothing. And they're probably, you know, I don't know how their finances are, but uh, it'd be tough. I know that. I just have one question, Joe. Uh, the maintenance, did that go to paint their roofs on the barns? I see there's a $7,500 expense there. Is that where yes, that, the maintenance fund went? Yeah, that's what we just, we just spent that $7,500 last week that the painter from uh, Arkansas that's been doing our painting for, Oh, I don't know, last three years, I suppose. Sure. Uh, he, he does a nice job. I mean, you kind of got to where he started out at 8,700. I mean, I got him down to 7,500 and um, he told me it was hurting him, but I, you don't, you don't know what's <laughs> right, but I know it's, it's a, it's kind of a dangerous deal. I don't think we want to try tackling something like that ourselves up there on the roof and we don't have the equipment to do it either. So okay yeah i think it was seventy five hundred dollars well spent but it's done now and looks like he done a nice job and 
like I said, it, it ought to last several more years. It ain't like putting on new tin, but it gets you gets you years. So if, it, yeah. if we keep it up, it'll it'll be all right. Okay, thank you. So, anybody else have any more questions, Joe? Hey, thanks for coming yeah, on, thank Joe. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Okay, Kansas, hey, camp, just avoid these grant letters. Receive a letter, uh, we received a review, the submission of reimbursement or KCAP's risk avoidance grant program. Uh, so they've allowed us to have $2,000 for the purchase of a security system. Latches and Senior Village. I, Kaylee, were you the instigator of this? Or? I'm just the secretary on the safety committee, and I just applied for the grants. And um, Brian Oswald actually, while he was still up at the Senior Village, um, actually wanted this security system. They got one a couple of years ago, and they applied for the RAC grant at that time as well, just to try and mitigate claims for liability, stuff like that. Um, so they needed some more cameras, more security um, to cover areas that might not have been covered initially. So the total that they spent was a little over $2,000. However, the SPRAG grant, um, we only can get back $2,000. So with turning in the application to KCAMP for this you know, then we received. So we're going to get that check back. Then we'll go back to the senior village, the 2000. Okay, so we're just going to receive and file sure. and give you that a boy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice. Yes. Nice work Great to job. all of you on the safety committee. I think Brian and the senior village. $2,000 is maybe not a gigantic piece of money compared to our total budget, but everything to win. $2,000 <laughs> adds up after a while. So it takes a lot. We'll take it. <laughs> so. Uh, it's pretty cool deal. Um, any old or unfinished business before the board? A Pat County Councilor updates? I, uh, we've been working to identify properties for the, the upcoming tax sale. In the uh, process of doing that, we've discovered a glitch with CIC, the system is not properly identifying all the top, all of the properties it's not doing the search quite correctly so uh, we've been working on uh, working with CIC on getting that corrected uh, so it's going a little slower maybe than, uh, than anticipated uh, because originally when we were doing it we were getting uh, 119 parcels and that includes parcels that were sold in the last tax sale and uh, Going through and searching a little harder, maybe we found uh, maybe another. Well, maybe, um, the total of 106 parcels, um, but that which excludes the parcels that were in the last tax sale. So that would have been 113 plus 106, 219, I guess, that, uh, that we. We're, we're showing up. So um, anyway, I uh, am getting ready to send a letter out to before we send those to abstract thinking to the owners, giving them a heads up, asking them to uh, make arrangements with the treasurer if they have an interest in uh, avoiding abstracting costs. If we incur those, those get assessed against the landowners and ultimately court costs. Um, and then, of course, some of them may also notice that they're uh, or alert us that we've got some some error. That's fairly uncommon, but we have one in the last tax sale, for example, that had an error. But so, uh, that, that's all I have. Okay. Executive session. Being the executive session, I'm going to make the motion. 
uh, for uh, personal matters. Personal matters, and for how long? Twenty minutes. Okay. I'll move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 3.25 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1, and that the purposes of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee, and that the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session at 3.45 did you say half hour for 20 minutes? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Uh, 3 45 p.m. in the commission room, first floor courthouse. And those present will be the three commissioners, Pat Henderson, County Counselor, Jamie Madison, HR, and Joe Snyder, Road and Bridge. Did I miss anybody? You did get. Have a second. I'll second. Second by Chris for um, discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes through the zero. You. Okay, we are we are on. So okay, we want to go back in for five minutes, Eric. You want to make a motion? Okay, then I'll read it again. I'll move that the board of county commissioners recess into executive session at 3:45 p.m. So to I'll discuss. Stop the video. Are you? No. We're on. Okay. To discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319B1. And that the purposes of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the board come out of the executive session at 3 50 p.m in the commission room first floor courthouse and those present will be three commissioners jamie madison joe snyder and pat anderson i have a second second all in favor second five is saying aye aye for the executive session We're on. No? Yeah, just unvideo yourself, please. Well, I the video not if it hit, okay. The host has stopped the video. Okay. Start. Okay. Okay. So, it's okay there. We have a uh, proclamation. I, I that didn't press the, the... Mine are showing open. It says you cannot start the video because the host is stopped. No, I know. You just hit okay there. Oh, hit, hit, okay. hit this one. The video is I've started. never hit that but one. But his before. video is starting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, I have a proclamation today. Uh, actually, County Kansas proclamation where uh, as medical, emergency medical services, a vital public service, and the members of emergency management medical team are ready to provide life saving care to those in need 24 hours a day seven days a week and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness and injury. Whereas medical, emergency medical services have traditionally served as a safety net of America's health care system. And whereas emergency medical teams consist of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. And approximately two thirds of all emergency medical services providers are volunteers. And whereas the emergency medical service team, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life saving skills. And whereas America benefit daily with the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals, and it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Service Week. And whereas in the injury prevention and the appropriate use of EMS systems will reduce national health care costs. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Atchison County, State of Kansas, do hereby proclaim the week of May 16th, the 21st, as Emergency Medical Service Week uh, in Ashton County and encourage all residents to observe this week with appropriate program ceremonies and activities. 
adopted by the Board of County Commissioners, Atchison County, this 11th day of May, 2021. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, you guys really make a difference in our community. And sometimes you go on some, you know, it's, I don't know if I need you till I need you. So uh, every time I see an ambulance sitting in front of someone's house, I cringe. <laughs> and I know that they're in good care of that. Thank you. Is there a color we could put the clock at the courthouse on that would demonstrate EMS? Uh, blue. Okay. Keely, can you arrange that? Yeah. Okay. We'd appreciate that. Okay. And we'll do some, you know, obviously, there'll be some social media posts and stuff. So, hey, thank your crowd out there. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, do we need to vote on that or? We not a proclamation okay? No, I think we need to all sign it. Yes. But two copies of it, so okay. Any public comment? We've passed the commissioner comments, so if you, it's okay, just no, say, those. say a couple okay. things. I just sure. wanted to say I have a QA meeting tomorrow at Senior Village at noon, um, and then it's also Nursing Home Week, so we're celebrating um, the county's Senior Village Nursing Home. Um, I'm biased now that I've met everyone, but um, we have the best residents and staff, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and then also last Friday, I was invited to Benedictine to speak on a panel um, to explain why, well, students were, were allowed to ask us questions and talk about why I decided to run for county commissioner and just learning about Atchison. They actually have a class at Benedictine that's exploring Atchison. And so I joined um, Mayor Abby Bartlett was there, Charo Kelly from um, Benedictine and Atchison United, and then Sean Crittenden was also part of it um, from the Boys and Girls Club and then um, Atchison United and Crittenden Home Care. And it was it was a really great experience. I met um, actually an Atchison County kid that goes to Benedictine and has a huge passion for the Atchison County Historical Society. And it was just the conversations that came up would blow your mind. It was it was really, uh, really fulfilling and a lot of engaged students wanting to know more about Atchison County and not looking to maybe leave after they graduate. So it was pretty awesome. Excellent. Yeah. I have nothing to add. Uh, I, I have nothing. And I apologize for not doing that at the beginning. Uh, I think I looked at that agenda and said, well, we're going to get caught here. Yeah. <laughs> So well, that, no that was a credit credit communication. Um, okay. So the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn at 1.58 p.m. Moved okay. by Commissioner Three, Nolan. 3.58. Seconded, 3.58. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Quinn. So, All in favor said the father say aye. Do we uh, have to do, should we do it again? Or? Keep correcting. Oh, okay. He did say. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay, because we've had 107. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty rare. So we're done? We're done.